This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. It's time for your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Luck. Today is November 23rd, 2020, Thanksgiving week. And I guess we all have a lot to be thankful for. This is show number 164. So looks like the big news, Nick, is making progress on the COVID front, huh? Yeah, it looks like every Monday we seem to wake up and we get some news on one of these drug companies coming out with the uh, a new vaccine. So it looks like uh, today AstraZeneca uh, said that their uh, clinical trials done with uh, in partnership with Oxford was found to be 90 percent effective in preventing coronavirus. We also had news from Regeneron. That's a drug that President Trump uh, supposedly took. And it looks like they received emergency use authorization from the FDA uh, for treatment of COVID-19. So, uh, you know, we're getting these these news events on Monday mornings, it seems like, every week now. This is the third consecutive week in a row. So we'll see how the rest of the week does. But remember, this is a hol holiday week. Uh, the markets will be closed on Thanksgiving, and they'll have a half-day session for a half-day session on Friday. All right. So gold and silver are getting really slammed today, aren't they? Gold is getting crushed today. Uh, right now, we have gold futures down about thirty five dollars to eighteen thirty seven an ounce. It looks like the GLD, which is the gold ETF, down about three dollars and ten cents. That's a decline of around one and three quarters percent. And then you have silver getting hit today as well. SLV down fifty four cents as we speak. And that's the silver ETF. And then you have uh, silver futures down about uh, three percent right now. A seventy three cent drop there in silver futures. Yeah. Well, you know, they always like to nail the medals during a holiday uh, session, it seems. Yeah, I mean, right now, Kerry, this is really nothing out of the ordinary from what we've talked about anyway. Um, just backing and filling, and it needs to do a bit more. And, you know, again, it's a bigger time frame pattern. I don't think there's really any real damage done here. Uh, the one thing I will say that looks positive to me is um, when you look at the gold miners, which are down about 3% as well today, you know, they'll get they're going to get very attractive soon. So I still think they got some more downside here. But, um, you know, they're just starting to get into some attractive levels. Yeah, and the profits that they're going to be reporting, I'm talking the ones who are actually producing, they're going to have some pretty substantial profits. Yeah, and that's probably why they're nearing such good support levels shortly. So uh, that makes all the sense to me. Uh, I'm never one to put the fundamentals with, together with, too well with the technicals. But, uh, you know, gold miners, to me, they'll, they'll look pretty promising for a trade, um, you know, not too far off from where they are now. All right. So we're approaching a tradable opportunity here. We are. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Any other sectors we should be paying attention to? Well, today we have technology a little on the weaker side. In particular, it's the NASDAQ 100 stocks. We're seeing Apple down $2 today. So, um, again, I am, I am not really loving – the moves that I'm seeing in technology, it seems to really continue to struggle. And that's been going on for quite some time. But as mo long as money flow goes elsewhere, meaning into the financials, into the energy stocks, into retail, then, then things are fine. If money starts to come out of those sectors, then there would be problems on the horizon. But right now, we're seeing tech a little bit on the weaker side. It's only down, down $4.80. It's basically flat on the day. But we're seeing real good action today in the financials again, JPM. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase up two dollars and twenty nine cents. Wells Fargo is up seventy cents. Stock is now above twenty six dollars uh, a share, and this is a stock that's nearly up three percent today. And that's been you know one of the beaten down uh, big banks for a long time. So Wells Fargo and even Citigroup up over three percent today. You know those two stocks have been weak lately, and they're showing real good life right now. Well, wow, that's pretty surprising. Like Citigroup, uh, it's always kind of the uh the dog of the uh, finance stocks, isn't it? Yeah, well, Wells Fargo has really taken over. It used to be City. City's now the second dog, but Wells Fargo's the first dog. And uh, Wells Fargo's having a good day, and Citigroup as well. So surprising uh, to see that, but we, we've been seeing some money flowing into there lately. 
Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Which what is that? What do you glean from that uh, as far as where the market's heading and and what's going on here? Well, considering those stocks have been really, really weak as of late, and, and what I mean as of late, I mean this year. Um, if you take a look at any of the financials, you'll notice, you know, we were not making new highs in July, August, September, October, November when the markets were making new highs. Now the financials are now starting to make, you know, getting up to, uh, they're not back to where they were in February, but they're they're making new pivot highs. So they're above the June highs, which was their last big run that they had so that's a that's a good sign of strength we'll we'll always um we'll always ex, uh watch the financials for an overall tell of of what's going on in the economy um so you know this, this might turn out to be a decent holiday season um but a, again i think traders you know you have to take it on a day by day week by week basis you don't want to overstep the uh, the boundaries of this market yeah that's for sure well one interesting thing we're seeing uh, with the lockdowns is I think people have gotten to the end of it. They've just had enough, and they're really not going to take it anymore. Well, when you see your politicians not following the rules, and you know they're out and about at fancy restaurants, and they don't wear masks, um, why should you? Um, so people have have you know really I think are at the uh, crossroads here. Are you going to decide that you want freedom and liberty, or do you want to just be told what to do like a sheep in a you know in a corral? Yeah. Well, I think people have gotten to the end because. There's no proof that the lockdowns work. Uh, there was just a study that just came out, the Danish study, which they've done their best to suppress. 6,000 people in the study, I think 5,000 finished it, and it showed that, yes, there was a slight decline in the number of cases of COVID for people who wore masks continually, but as they said, it wasn't statistically significant, and it certainly wasn't anywhere near 50%, which is what they were claiming, that that wearing masks would somehow decrease new incidences of COVID by 50%. It's a few percent at best. Yeah, and, and I, I think there are a lot of other studies out pressed by, you know, with the media. I don't even know what we call them these days, but, you know, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. I've been on this planet for over 50 years now, and I've I've never seen suppression of information quite like we see today. So, um you know, again, if you look at people, and I, I like to just look at what they did in Sweden. Now, Sweden is definitely a smaller country, but uh, just look at how they handled everything, and, and uh, they're still still outperforming everyone else. Yeah, exactly, and herd immunity, everything else. I just think it could be an indication of what's going to happen with the markets here, because once people refuse to be locked down any longer, refuse to shut down your business, and refuse to comply then we might really see uh, the end of the pandemic. Maybe not the end of the medical pandemic, but the end of the economic pandemic. Yeah, that that's, uh, you know, that's, that's but the, you, what people don't realize is there's been a lot of damage done. When you shut these businesses down for weeks at a time, there's so many new bankruptcies that come, come about. And, and that's really, really uh, uh, problematic. I think that's going to be problematic also going into 2021. Um, just, just looking at, you know, how much damage they do every time they do these second and third wave lockdowns. And I was in New York city over the weekend and it's shocking. Every third or fourth store in these upscale neighborhoods is boarded up, is closed. And obviously there's more on the way restaurants closing right and left. And now they want to lock down the city again. They've locked down the schools. Uh, they just don't seem to care about the damage that they're causing. Yeah, uh, you know, unfortunately, these these blue states they they just don't don't really get it. I guess I I don't I don't know what what goes through the, I uh, and I don't know why the people stand for it any longer. You know, they elect these officials, but um, this is the damage that they have done in the name of this so-called novel virus is, is just beyond me. Yeah. Next thing I heard, they were going to go to supermarkets and start uh, confiscating the large turkeys. So nobody can have a uh, large Thanksgiving get together. I mean, it's just complete and utter madness, Nick. <laughs> I, you know, the funny thing, if you would have told, if you were to ever tell me that uh, a year ago, I would never believe you. But these days, I, I think that's that's a possibility. Yeah. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. Make sure you go over, take a look at Nick's site in themoneystocks dot com for his trading record. A lot of other useful info. The Twitter feeds are 
at ITMS, at Nick Santiago 01, at Carrie Lutz. Email us, kl at kerrylutz.com, and Nick will pick up tomorrow. Sounds great. This concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. For more information, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com and see Nick's full trading record or check out the Twitter feeds at ITMS and at NickSantiago01.